All right, everybody, welcome. My name is James, and I'm one of the wellness coaches at the Center for Health Advocacy and Wellness here at FSU. My name is Kara. I'm also a wellness coach here at Shaw. Yeah, and today, uh, Kara and I, uh, we're, we're both uh, doctoral students here at FSU as well, but today we are going to be going over just some general um, information about wellness coaching. And also, we're going to dive into some questions that students have submitted um, just as they start to um, work from home on classwork and everything. And uh, we'll start going into some of those in a minute. Um, but first off, um, you might be asking, what is wellness coaching? And um, just during the regular school year, prior to everything going on with uh, COVID, uh, wellness coaching uh, was a one-on-one -on -one appointment that you could schedule at Shaw. And uh, it's individualized education that provides students with uh, just skills necessary to improve their overall well-being and their academic performance. And a lot of uh, what brought students in was um, issues like stress management, relaxation techniques, uh, developing good eating habits, exercise, test taking strategies, sleeping, and time management. So all sorts of different skills that you could learn through wellness coaching. So that's just a brief little overview. And since we've moved everything online now, um, what are the big things Kara and I will be doing is just answering questions that you guys have submitted um, just to help uh, make it through this time. So one of the first big questions we have uh, that we've gotten from several students uh, just pertains to stress. So like one of the questions we have here is life is stressing me out, help. How do I relax during all the COVID-19 stress? So first off, that's completely normal to be stressed out uh, during this time. It, it, it's different. We've never been through something like this. Our parents haven't been through something like this. So it's hard to sort of relate to what is going on. So it is okay to be experiencing some stress. Um, obviously, we don't want you to experience too much. So we want you to think of things that can help you address that. Uh, so one of the best things you can do is on a preventative level, uh, getting enough exercise as much as you can, developing you know good sleeping habits, eating well, and just making sure you take breaks and engage in activities that can help you uh, relax. Um, so a lot of this takes place on a preventative level. I agree with James. So um... And it's all the stress, and like he said, this is brand new for everybody, so it's totally normal that you might be experiencing a lot of um, anxiety or uncertainty, and we'll just do our best to manage what we can, so um, kind of the physical stuff. So are you eating enough, trying to eat healthy? Are you getting enough sleep? Taking care of those basic, basic things that um, are really important then for us to feel better with our emotions on top of that. Absolutely. And definitely uh, talking with other people. You know, a lot of your friends are in similar situations. So talking with them um, about what they're doing to manage stress and just talking with them in general, you know, is a very healthy practice. And um, in addition to that, there are a few app, um, phone applications you can use um, that are free. Uh, one of them is called uh, Calm. You can find that on your app store, and I believe it's available on Android as well. But Calm is a great little app that can give you meditation, exercises, videos, some really good stuff to help you fall asleep. Um, so definitely check that out. And another app you can look up is called Headspace, and that's a really fun one as well. And then um, similarly, there's an app called Insight Timer. So if you're interested in like meditations or guided imagery, relaxation stuff, they've got just so many different ones to explore. They have ones for like sleep and you can kind of um, have a timer on there for when you wanna do your meditation. And what's really cool is you can see people in your area, how they're meditating as well. So it can be used kind of in a social way too. Very nice. All right, and lastly, um, I know it's hard not to um, completely refrain from watching the news, but limit how much uh, news you are taking in. Uh, it's good to be informed, but you know, watching too much news, especially of everything that's going on right now, can be a little stressful. So taking um, just an inventory of what's stressing you out, if it is the news, you know, refraining from that, um, refraining from too much of it. And lastly, you know, if you are experiencing a considerable amount of stress and anxiety, 
or just any other mental health concern at this time, please reach out uh, for help. Um, the FSU Counseling Center has a bunch of good resources as well and some options for getting some uh, therapy through, I believe, a telephone and telehealth options. So definitely check out uh, FSU University Counseling Center as well. All right, what other questions we got here, Kara? So similar to that and having all that stress, um, a lot of people ask kind of for some self-care tips. So self-care is, um, it can be, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of different activities that you might enjoy. Um, and it could be as easy as just getting out of your apartment or your house and going on a walk around the block while maintaining social distance. So um, it can be really simple, but it's really hard sometimes to prioritize that, especially now that we're wrapping up the end of the semester, you might have a lot more deadlines and um, people needing you to sign on for different meetings and stuff. Um, if you're home with your family, you might have more responsibilities there that you didn't have when you were maybe on campus. So um, it can be really hard to prioritize self-care, but Go back to things that you enjoy, things that you find that calm you down and make sure to prioritize that because it's gonna be good for your overall like mental and physical health too, especially during this stressful time. Absolutely, good advice. All right, now along those lines, you know, um, Kara mentioned, you know, it can be very hard uh, to, to meet deadlines, to feel like you are giving 100% at this time, just because it's all new, you know, everything is online these days with uh, classes. And that's something that a lot of us haven't done before. And it can feel like you're um, not being as productive, as productive as you would in class, or just with your normal schedule. Um, so some students ask about this um, topic of self compassion. And what self compassion is, um, is not judging and criticizing ourselves um, for just various shortcomings um, and self care compassion. Uh, it's more about being kind and understanding um, just when we are confronted with these issues. So it's really, you know, being kind and understanding to ourselves. And um, there's a really good author and researcher by the name of uh, Kristen Neff. She is out of the University of Texas at Austin. And if you look up her, just uh, Christ, uh, Kristen Neff, that's N-E-F-F, uh, and self-compassion, there's a lot of good resources online um, and just a lot of good uh, sort of guided meditations um, focusing on self-compassion. So definitely check that out if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like you're inadequate or you're judging yourself too much for um, just not feeling like you're doing the best right now. So definitely check that out if you have some concerns about self-compassion. All righty. And related to, to self-compassion and doing that. So um, all of us are adjusting. You might not be able to do as much as you normally would um, during this time in the semester. So each day you might have different levels of functioning with what you can get done and um, being, being okay with that and realizing some days you're gonna be able to do, do more than you would than other days. And um, just knowing that you're doing the best you can for each day with where you're at. Very good. All right, so a lot of good questions you all have submitted here. Um, in regards to, you know, stress, feeling like you're not doing 100% well, uh, that can definitely lead into uh, issues with sleep. So some students have submitted questions about what tips do you have for getting better and more restful sleep? So here's just a few uh, general guidelines that have uh, a lot of research behind them, but big one is trying your best to go to to bed and waking up at the same time each day. So setting a bedtime and um, you know setting an alarm to get up in the morning and trying to stick to that as much as possible. It's gonna help ensure you get a good amount of sleep. Uh, another big one is just avoiding things like alcohol, caffeine, and food before bedtime. So a lot of those um, like substances and foods, they can disrupt our sleep cycles. So definitely refrain from those especially right before you go to bed. Exercise is huge. And it doesn't matter uh, what time you're doing it, if it's in the morning, the afternoon, or at night, but trying to get regular exercise is a great way to uh, just make your body tired and helps you fall asleep a little quicker. Uh, let's see, uh, this can be really hard, especially since you know some of you, are, well, a lot of you are at home right now. 
and your bedroom might be the only place you know where you can sneak away and work on stuff by yourself but as much as you can try not to work in your bed on school assignments or other work um, items you know doing that can uh, cause your brain to think that that is where you do your work and a lot of us work right now can be stressful for us so when we're associating that with our bed our brain's going to have a harder time recognizing that that's where we go to get rest. So as much as you can, try not to work in your bed, trying to find somewhere else in your house or your apartment where you can complete your assignments. And lastly, uh, creating a bedtime ritual is very helpful. So instead of, um, you know, doing things that are going to really excite your brain before you go to bed, trying to get a ritual that's getting your brain to relax and get um, prepared. So if that's, uh, you know, getting in your PJs maybe an hour before you plan to fall asleep, uh, washing your face, brushing your teeth, having a cup of tea or something, getting into a ritual that sort of programs your brain into getting prepared to fall asleep is very helpful. James, that's a really good point about the routine. You definitely want your to get in some sort of routine where you're, it cues your mind um, that you are kind of preparing for bed. So you're mentally kind of rubbing down. Um, another tip too is breaking away from the electronics, at least probably a half an hour before you go to bed. That's a really big one. Um, and one that is really hard to do, especially if you've been working all day and you want to talk to your friends or you have websites or apps that you like to do at night. Um, or if one of those are kind of your relaxing end of the end of the day apps, but it's really important because um, being, close to that screen, it's going to send signals to your brain that, um, you know, you need to be up, that it's kind of daytime. So um, if you can do at least a half an hour where you um, take a break from those screens and do some of your nighttime routine, then that can help to wind the brain down and get ready for bed. Good point. All right. So looking through some other questions here, trying to consolidate some of them to make sure we get all this all these answered i think um you want to talk about the family question yeah let's go into that all what right. do we got on family stuff we had someone ask a question about um now that they're back home how do you set boundaries with your family so i thought that was a really great question mm -hmm. and um not quite sure like what might be some of the issues that might be going on with person who asked this question but um, I could see quite a few coming up. So for one, like you're at home now, but you're still trying to do your role as a student. So um, maybe your family isn't as attuned or aware that there are things you need to do throughout the day. You might be home, but you've got a lot of responsibilities and things you're trying to get done. Um, maybe it's emotional boundaries, like um, when you're home, maybe you're getting a lot of questions about your personal life or you're just feeling like um, a little bit more drained than you would. Like you can't just maybe put down the phone after a conversation with um, a parent or a family member and then take a break from that, you might not have a break from these people, especially if everyone's maybe home um, and stay in, stay in home for like COVID safety purposes. Um, so I thought that was a great point. And one of the things that you can do for um, creating boundaries first is just being aware of what your, your values are um, and being aware of what the boundaries are that you need. Because um, one of the most important things about setting boundary is being firm with it and being consistent. And those are great points, Kara. And definitely with boundaries, um, not assuming that the other people that you're residing with right now, whether it be family or friends, not assuming that they know uh, what those boundary lines are. And that can be uh, awkward and stressful to communicate those at times, but just being clear of, hey, this, this is the time that I've devoted to work on an assignment, or this is when I have an online class. Just being clear with them about what those times may be and just what your needs are and that once again i'm not saying that's easy but just learning how to um you know assertively set those boundaries uh, with the people you're residing with mm -hmm. and along those lines uh, just using i statements instead of like you statements so for example i need this time to complete my assignment rather than confronting someone and saying you always interrupt me and prevent me from completing this task so the importance of using I statements when setting boundaries. That's a great point, James. I'll also share my screen with a worksheet I, I found. Wait, maybe not. Um, but um, 
yeah, practice setting those boundaries before you do them because um, it might be hard. You're probably going to get a pushback from family too. It's like, oh, well, you're home now. These are the things you need to do X, Y, Z. Um, so you need to be open to hearing their side and being able to use those I statements and kind of say things as in a more objective way if you can um, to be able to have that conversation instead of maybe being shut down. So um, some things that you can say, some examples are, um, you know, when you do this, um, this affects me in this way. I'm not able to um, be able to study for my exam. Um, so establishing what it is that maybe you need from them to be successful and showing like why you're putting that boundary in place. Um, you know, I can't help you with cooking dinner right now because I have um, homework that's due tonight and I want to get a good grade, but I can help you prepare dinner tomorrow, something like that. Exactly. And something we'll talk about in a few minutes is the importance of setting a schedule or a routine for your week. Even though you might be at home, you know, it's still really important to develop a schedule or just for time management and everything. But something I saw online, uh, I forget where this was, but somewhere where six roommates all um, in the same apartment together. And they're all students and they're all trying to manage and respect each other's boundaries. So something they've done is just sharing uh, their calendars and just what they're working on throughout the day. So other people know like, okay, so-and-so is working on this at this time. I shouldn't be bothering them or asking them questions. And they had a whole um, like blackboard that they put this on, but you can do it online. You can share Google Calendar, whatever you can do uh, just to sort of let people know what you're working on so they don't interrupt you during that time. And then um, similarly, so thinking about people in your life, some people asked about um, how do you stay in touch with your friends that you miss? You know, your life might be drastically different than it was just a few weeks ago. And um, a lot of people went away on spring break thinking they'd see their friends in a week and it's gonna probably be some time to get together. Um, but I know that for me and my friends and my family, we've been doing a lot of video chatting, which has been a lot of fun and making time for that. Very cool. Yeah, so definitely um, video chatting, FaceTime, using Zoom, uh, whatever you can do to, you know, still maintain social distancing, but still get those uh, social interactions um, is really important. And uh, get creative and do some uh, searches of um, various apps. A lot of really creative people have come up with some really cool apps to, uh, that allow you to do other things of just talking uh, with people. Um, online. So one uh, that I saw was called like Netflix Party, which allows you to watch uh, anything that's on Netflix with a group of people. And you can chat, you can talk, uh, whatever, but it's just a way to stay connected with some friends, even if you can't be there in person. And then other things like House Party, which is just another app or platform where you can communicate, but you can also play games, listen to music, do all sorts of fun things. There's even some really fun uh, joint exercise applications that you can use. That's just a fun way to stay healthy, uh, both physically and socially during this time. So get creative, find new ways of connecting with people. Yeah, and maybe making some new traditions too. Maybe on Thursdays you Skype in with your friends and have dinner together, something like that. Something you can look forward to and um, to break up the routine and be able to check in on a regular basis. I know, um, too, like kind of what James is saying, be, be creative. So if you, maybe you are still on campus and have friends in the area, but you're trying not to see them, maybe um, doing something low tech and dropping off to their, their place, like a card or some baked goods or something. Um, of course, keeping your distance, but little surprises, things like that. Nice things you can do for your friends. Let them know that you're thinking about them and you care. Very cool. All right, so shifting away from like family and social stuff, moving back into some more educational questions. So one, actually a couple of students here, I submitted a question of, I keep getting distracted when I go to study and help, exclamation point. So that's a big concern for sure. You know, you might've been used to studying in a certain way when you were still on campus and now that's not possible. You can't go to the library. You can't go to your favorite coffee house um, as you might have used to. So what can you do to continue to study, to stay on schedule uh, while you might be working at home? 
So I mentioned earlier the importance of scheduling. You know, it's still very important to maintain a calendar. If you keep a paper copy or if you do something on your computer or online, but mapping out your week is crucial. Putting in those times where your classes are, or if you're still able to work from home, scheduling that it out into your calendar is really important just to keep you on track and focused. So that's one of the biggest things. If you don't have a calendar, start using one or some type of planner. And along those lines, uh, developing a routine. So I mentioned earlier with like this sleep, making sure you get to bed at the same time and you wake up each morning at the same time. That's going to really cue your brain into getting into that routine and start developing patterns. So waking up at the same time, maybe doing some exercising, doing some meditation, and then launching into your work. But scheduling that out in advance uh, really helps. Yeah. And maybe there's a place in your home where um, you only go when you're trying to study or work on something. So that can kind of, mm -hmm. similar to what James, James is talking about, kind of trick your brain into that more productive mode because so it knows like, okay, when I sit in this chair at this desk, I know I need to do some work. Um, like you're not sitting at that desk too, like on the phone or on your computer, like on social media, something where it's devoted to just that time. And maybe in your routine, um, you start out, you're going to get your, like your coffee in the morning and set up like a nice work routine where you're going to feel like, okay, um, I'm getting off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. And then a technique that I really like for productivity. So I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times it takes me a while to start something or it's really overwhelming. So there's a technique called the Pomodoro technique um, and P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O. -O -O. And that's something where you chunk your time. So you can kind of set the times as you like, but maybe you're gonna work for 25 minutes and then after 25 minutes, you're gonna take a five minute break. So that's gonna help us be like keep our focus because if you say I'm going to sit down and study for three hours straight your brain's going to need some time to kind of relax and it's going to be hard to be productive during those three hours so whether it's you know 25 minutes 15 minutes um sit down for that amount of time be as focused and productive as you can and then take that break after each chunk of time and there's a chrome extension that I really like that is called um let's see I think it's called insight timer and that actually will, um, if you install this extension, and if you click on it, it's gonna keep you away from all those like fun websites that distract you. So if I try to go on um, Twitter or something when I'm trying to work, it's gonna say like, no, you're still, you're still working. That's really cool. I need to check that one out. Yeah, I think I had the, the name wrong. That was the app I talked before. Let's see. Um, I think it's called focus. Focus. Okay, cool. Yeah, and just along with that too, um, something that I actually did before we transitioned to school from home, um, one of the research teams I'm on, we would actually hold a joint writing times together just to hold each other accountable to our like publications and stuff we were working on. So we would set like a set time and for that two hours we would all meet up this was in person, but um, we'd meet up and we would uh, all devote time to just writing and just hold each other accountable. So obviously you can't meet in person, but scheduling a Zoom meeting just so that you're there in the presence, it feels like a study group, um, just something that holds you accountable to the process or whatever project you might be working on. Likewise, so once, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just get creative with trying to find ways once again. Yeah. So even though we're all remote and we're not on campus, FSU still is offering some great services too. So if you go online, you go to FSU ACE, they are hosting individual tutoring sessions, they're hosting group tutor sessions as well. So all that stuff is still going on. It's still a resource. So um, definitely take advantage of that, whether you are needing a little bit of extra help in a certain area, or maybe you just need that extra accountability. Maybe it's really tough to get in that mode of work from home. So maybe schedule a tutoring session or jump onto one of those group tutoring um, study sessions too, to help you kind of um, schedule some of that study time. Yeah. Great points. All right. So also in regards to study, and we've had some questions about preparing for finals. So finals is about last, I looked about two and a half weeks away. So it's coming up. 
And um, one of the best things to do now is to start planning now. Don't wait until a week before finals. Certainly don't wait till the night before a final, right? You don't want to do be pulling an all-nighter or anything. So start planning out now what your study schedule is going to look like. Identifying those courses that are going to require additional time. Starting to study those earlier. And just mapping out what that plan looks like in advance. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I really like something that's called the five day study plan. Um, so you definitely don't want to cram if you don't have to. So the earlier you start reviewing the material, the better. Give your brain a chance to, um, you know, kind of encode that information long term. So this is a plan where um, if you Google five day study plan, you can find it. Also, FSU ACE website has it as well with more information. But pretty much you're breaking up the material you need to study for into five days. And the first day you're gonna start with the hardest material. So um, all like the chapters that are most difficult for you or maybe the ones you don't know as well. And then day two, you're gonna review the stuff in the first day and then you're gonna do the second hardest material. Day three, you're gonna review everything from the first three days and do kind of that medium difficulty stuff. Um, day four, you're gonna do more like the stuff that comes the easiest that you know the best while also reviewing everything from the previous days. And then day five is going to be more like review everything. So it's really great because um, stuff you study on day one, that's the hardest stuff. You're also should be reviewing that every single day along with more of the newer stuff or the stuff that comes a little bit easier. So you're giving yourself a good chunk of time to know the hardest concepts and review all the material. So I really like that technique. That's a great strategy. Really cool. All right. Also, um, Definitely reach out to professors or your TAs. I know that can be a little stressful at times, but they can be uh, very understanding and very helpful if there's something that you don't understand or if you just have a question about uh, the final, what it might look like even, now that it's probably going to be online. Definitely reach out now so you can start getting prepared. I don't know um, if any of you have taken a final online before because it can be a little different. Uh, so definitely just preparing in advance for what that might look like. And then um, something else so related to like being distracted by studying or trying to get started with studying for finals. So a lot of people might be procrastinators or struggle with that. And um, with procrastination, there's a lot of kind of like self-criticalness that you have. So once again, talking about establishing and practicing some of that self-compassion too. And it's really important if you find yourself avoiding a task or procrastinating on it, a lot of times it's maybe not about productivity or something that's, um, you're not a good worker, there could be something else that's underlying it. So um, there's a lot of like, sometimes emotional reasons why we're not starting something or tackling a task. And um, so take time instead of beating yourself up about it, realize what's the source of why I'm not doing it. Um, because it could be maybe wanting or worried you're not going to do well or you're dealing with all the other anxieties and life transition that is going on just in general so um attending to some of the reasons why you're not doing it or it's challenging to get started with something might help you go farther in the long term and being able to be okay with that and be kind to yourself as you continue on and start prepping for finals great point kara all right well, that looks like a lot of the questions that we've had submitted so far. Thank you all so much for those. These are very, um, you know, just great questions and just a lot of good, you know, concerns. And I'm glad people are, you know, expressing these and identifying stuff that they need help with. And definitely continue to submit these questions uh, just through even our Facebook page or online. And we'd be happy uh, to answer more of them in the future. And let's see, anything else, Kara, that we'd like to share at this time? Yeah, so I just like the same thing, want to appreciate all the questions. Please um, check out Shaw for more content too, and reach out, reach out to, if you're having trouble, your professors, your friends, family, like everyone is dealing with their, their own stuff. And a lot of people do want to be helpful. A lot of people know that um, there's a lot you might be dealing with, so. Um, if someone can make it a little bit easier or help you out, they might want to do that. Absolutely. There's definitely resources out there, plenty of resources at FSU alone. So please reach out, ask questions, and uh, don't be afraid to get some help. 
produce some pointers. So I hope everyone right. takes care of themselves, and um, hopefully we'll have more questions from you soon. All right. Thank you all for viewing, and uh, please um, submit more questions if you have any. Thank you.